A sunken land in the North Sea. This is not fiction, but reality. For centuries, the legend of Atlantis has fascinated humanity. A sunken, advanced civilization that suddenly disappeared into the sea. But what if I told you that there really was a sunken land that was once inhabited by people? And what if this Atlantis wasn't somewhere in distant oceans, but right on our doorstep in the middle of the North Sea? Stay tuned until the end. Today is going to be truly fascinating. A warm welcome, everyone. Today we're heading to the North Sea, so grab a herring sandwich and write your best travel tips for the North Sea in the comments. Where do you like to vacation or where do you live? I'm very curious. And by the way, if you always want to stay informed about fascinating archaeological discoveries, lost worlds, and the mysteries of our past, then go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Subscribing doesn't cost anything. You'll never miss another video, and it really helps me out a lot. And if you've already subscribed, giving the video a thumbs up really supports it. Maybe we can hit 5,000 likes the YouTube algorithm loves that. So now imagine you could walk from Germany to England 10,000 years ago without getting your feet wet. No English Channel, no stormy North Sea, just wide, fertile land as far as the eye can see. That was Doggerland. And it's not a myth like many Atlantis theories, but scientifically proven reality. The name comes from the Dogger Bank, a sandbank in the North Sea named after the Dutch fishermen, the Doggers. They were fishing there as early as the 17th century, unaware that they were casting their nets over a sunken world. But how big was Doggerland? This is where it gets really impressive. At its greatest extent, around 10,000 years ago, this landmass stretched over 45,000 square kilometers, according to the latest estimates. It reached from the east coast of England to Denmark and southern Sweden. At that time, Great Britain was not an island, but a peninsula connected to the European mainland. So. For a true Brexit, they would have had to blow up the land connections back then. Why was everything dry back then? It's simple. We were at the end of the last ice age. Gigantic glaciers had locked away unimaginable amounts of water, and the sea level was about 120 meters lower than it is today. Just imagine that, 120 meters. In terms of height, that's like submerging the Cologne Cathedral underwater, and only the tip would stick out. But Doggerland was by no means a barren ice desert. As the glaciers receded and the climate became milder, a veritable oasis of life developed there. Vincent Gaffney from the University of Bradford, one of the leading Doggerland researchers, describes it as follows. At that time, this must have been one of the best habitats. There was fresh water, birds, fish, and we are talking about an area so large that entire cultures could thrive there. Sounds like the perfect place for a Stone Age weekend cottage. The landscape must have been incredibly diverse. Modern seismic surveys have shown that there were forests, vast grassy plains, lakes, rivers, and even steep limestone cliffs. A huge freshwater lake collected water from the Rhine, Meuse, and Thames rivers and flowed into the Atlantic Ocean west of today's English Channel. It was a paradise for Stone Age hunters and gatherers. But did people really live there? Very likely, yes. The first evidence came in 1931, when a fishing boat pulled a carefully carved barbed point from the sea, 40 kilometers off the coast of Norfolk a 12,000-year-old harpoon. Since then, fishermen have repeatedly brought up tools, animal bones, and even human remains from the North Sea. In 2013, they even brought an 11,000-year-old skull bone to the surface. So it's quite possible that there's a real doggerlander somewhere in your own ancestry as well. But the truly spectacular discoveries were made by researchers at a place called Boldner Cliff, off the coast of the Isle of Wight. Here, 11 meters below the surface, archaeologists found a veritable time capsule. Over 1,000 intricately crafted flint tools, remains of fire pits, and over 100 pieces of wood showing signs of having been worked on. Some of this wood belonged to platforms, while other pieces may even have been parts of boats. The Maritime Archaeological Trust reports, this is the only place in the UK where we have made archaeological finds from these sunken Mesolithic worlds. Even more fascinating, DNA analyses of the sediments revealed traces of einkorn, one of the oldest domesticated grains. This means that the people of Doggerland had contact with the first farmers of southern Europe as early as 8,000 years ago. They were part of a far-reaching trade network. But nothing lasts forever, and as we know today, this Atlantis of the North Sea eventually sank beneath the waves. This is where the story becomes truly dramatic, because it wasn't the gradual rise of sea levels caused by the melting glaciers. That alone would have taken centuries and given people time to adapt. No, about 8,200 years ago, a catastrophe occurred. Off the coast of Norway, a gigantic section of the continental slope slid away. The Storega Slide, as researchers call this event, was enormous. 
3,500 cubic kilometers of material raced into the deep sea. That's enough to cover the whole of Iceland to a depth of 34 meters. This submarine avalanche triggered a mega tsunami that swept across the North Atlantic coast with waves up to 20 meters high. Doggerlin was also hit and for a long time researchers thought that was the end. But here's a fascinating plot twist. Uh, recent research by Vincent Gaffney and his team shows that Doggerland probably survived this tsunami. Our data suggests that the landscape initially recovered from this flooding, explains Gaffney. According to this, the final demise of Doggerland did not occur until sometime after the Storega landslide. DNA traces in sediment layers prove that evidence of plants and animals was found above the tsunami deposits. This means that part of Dorgolin may have survived as an archipelago for centuries, defying rising sea levels, a final island refuge for the survivors of this Stone Age civilization. If these islands still existed in the North Sea today, they'd probably be some kind of offshore tax haven or something. It was only about 7,500 years ago when the sea level continued to rise that even these last islands disappeared forever beneath the waves of the North Sea. Since then, the sea has hidden all traces of this sunken world, just like Plato's Atlantis. The parallels are truly astonishing. An advanced civilization on a large landmass that was suddenly struck by a natural disaster and eventually swallowed by the sea. The only difference is that Dogland definitely existed. Today, researchers are using cutting-edge technology to map this sunken world. They use sonar, seismic measurements, and DNA analysis of drill cores to unlock the secrets of the seabed. The Lost Frontiers project at the University of Bradford is systematically mapping the prehistoric landscapes of the North Sea. Richard Bates from the University of St. Andrews summarizes the significance of this research. We now have the opportunity for the first time to model the flora and fauna, paint a picture of the people who lived there, and understand some of the dramatic events that changed this landscape. But is all of this really as spectacular as it sounds? Well, I think it is. Because remember, just a few meters beneath the seabed of the North Sea lie the remains of a civilized civilization. The next time you stand on a beach in Great Britain and gaze melancholically at the sea, you will know that beneath the waves lies a land where people lived, loved, worked, and dreamed. Incidentally, there are already ideas on how to raise Dorgaland from the sea again. Let me know if you would like to see a video about this crazy mega project. Personally, I find the idea very exciting. In any case, I'll keep you updated on all further discoveries about the Atlantis of the North Sea. Subscribe to the channel now so you don't miss anything. And don't forget to give a thumbs up so we can hit 5,000 likes. And speaking of exciting discoveries, let's turn our attention to a physical revolution. More and more researchers are saying that gravity does not exist, and Einstein was wrong, but if gravity does not exist, how do space and time work? You can find out everything about these crazy discoveries in the video shown at the top right. Be sure to click on it if you want to have a physics identity crisis. And if you can't get enough of science and space, you'll find another video at the bottom right. Otherwise, I'd say see you in the next video. Take care, everyone.